Good morning. I'm glad we are back together. We're going to work on that second chapter of our, I Survived, The Children's Blizzard, 1888. Remember, this is a historical fiction, the genre that gives us some awesome information about a true historical event while we are learning this through a fictional character, okay? So chapter one was amazing. Let's dig right into chapter two. Remember, at the end of chapter one, um, he was uh, extremely scared and remember terrified and John heard the last sound of an evil wind as he was buried alive and that was the last part of chapter one so as we dig in to chapter two there's an illustration first and this is what we see okay here we go all right about four months earlier so this is a little bit of a precursor to what we learned in chapter one about four months earlier, September 19th, 1887, still taking place, Prairie Creek, Dakota Territory. This is very early at 7.45 a.m. John's little sister, Franny, had disappeared. She and John were on their way to school, the schoolhouse. They were halfway through the three-mile walk from their farm. Do you think you could walk three miles to school one way? It's a far walk. They were following an old wagon trail that cut through the tall golden grass. Franny, who was five, had been skipping up ahead. John had been watching her blonde braids flap up and down like the wings of a happy yellow bird. I want you to think about what we just read if we said the word like or as. Remember what type of clue that is, simile or metaphor? Somehow, he'd lost sight of her. John sped up, looking all around. It was hard to see through the grass, which rose up so high it tickled his neck. A unicorn could be prancing by, and John wouldn't notice. Franny, he shouted, where are you? Whoosh, said the wind, swish, said the grass. But no sign of Franny. John sighed. She must be playing hide and seek, her favorite game. When Franny found a good spot, she'd sit there forever. She wasn't going to make them late. Hmm, was she? It was hard enough for John going to school where we had no friends, but his teacher, Miss Ruel, was very mean. Oh, not good. He pictured her now, her hair stretched back in a bun, her eyes glaring through her little round glasses. She was young and barely five feet tall, but she ruled over the schoolhouse like a Civil War general. John had never once seen her smile. When kids were late, Miss Ruel made them stay in for recess and memorize some boring poem. Torture! Franny, John shouted. He stood on his tiptoes, peering into the distance. All he could see in any direction was wide open prairie. It seemed to stretch out forever, an ocean made of grass. That's really good imagery. He still couldn't get used to it, all this empty land. John and Franny and their parents had moved here to Dakota about a year ago from Chicago. It wasn't John's idea. He'd been happy living in the city, but Ma and Pa were fed up with their dark little apartment, their cursing neighbors, and the noise and stink that rose up from the street. For years, Ma and Pa have been talking about moving out west and buying a farm. But John always figured that was just their crazy dream. Like John wishing he could be a pitcher for the Chicago White Stockings, his favorite baseball team. Pa didn't make much money working at a cabinet shop. How could they ever afford to buy land for a farm? Then Ma and Pa heard they could get land in a place called Dakota. It was thousands of miles of open space west of Minnesota, Dakota wasn't a state, but it would be soon, folks said. And the government wanted farmers to come. They were even giving away big plots of land for free. All you had to do was build a farm and stay there for five years. Then the land is yours forever. For Ma and Pa, it was a dream come true. We're heading west, Pa boomed. We'll be pioneers, Ma said. John hoped the West would be like the places in his favorite adventure stories with rivers filled with gold nuggets and brave sheriffs chasing after famous bank robbers like Billy the Kid. Ma and Pa sold practically everything they owned. They traveled West by train. It took seven days to reach the edge of Dakota Territory. Then they bought a rickety wagon and an ox to pull it. John named the ox Shadow after his favorite white stocking pitcher, Shadow Pile. It was a two-day ride to the little town of Prairie Creek. If you could call it a town, hmm, only about 20 families lived there on little farms scattered across the prairie. The main street was a dusty strip of dirt with a general store on one side and a hardware store and tiny hotel on the other. John's family settled on a 160-acre piece of land about two miles just outside of town. 
There were no rivers of gold, no brave sheriffs. There wasn't even a bank for a guy like Billy the Kid to rob. There was only open, empty space and endless amounts of work. John and Pa sometimes were out in the fields from dawn until dusk. Ma hardly ever stopped scrubbing and cooking and sweeping. Franny's scrawny little arms had sprouted muscles from hauling buckets of water from the well. And the weather, the roasting summer sun, the thunderstorms that blackened the skies, winter days so cold that your spit froze before it hit the ground, blizzards that came out of nowhere. Last winter, the snow piled up almost to the rooftop. Pa had to dig a tunnel to get from the house to the barn. But for John, the worst part was the emptiness. He got a lonely feeling when he looked out over the prairie, an ache inside of him. It felt like the cold wind was just blowing right through his chest. John didn't belong here. He felt stranded in the middle of nowhere, and now Miss Ruel was going to punish him for being late. Franny, Franny, but wait, what if Franny wasn't playing a game? She could have wandered too far in the grass and gotten lost. Last year, a little boy from town disappeared. One minute, he'd been chasing jackrabbits behind his family's house, and the next minute, he'd vanished. John and Pa joined the big search, but the poor kid was never found. It was like the prairie had opened its grassy jaws and swallowed him whole. John cupped his hands around his mouth and yelled at the top of his lungs, Franny! The grass swished, the wind moaned, a flock of geese honked across the bright blue sky, but no sign of Franny. All right, guys, so I'm going to stop our reading. We will finish up again when we go into chapter three. I will put up some more awesome vocabulary words, and I will help you understand what that big gold rush was and the sheriffs and Billy the Kid with more informational videos for you to learn more about the historical components. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you very soon.